In this video, we're going to talk about how you can use DaVinci Resolve to get the filmic look. Right? Like, abhi hum log, we all shoot with digital cameras, either DSLRs or mirrorless. But we still like that nostalgic, little grainy, sa, jo filmy look hota tha, that is shot on film. We try to replicate that in our, like, digital films as well. This is one of the first... Uh, color grading tutorialish video or any type of tutorialish video that I'm making ever. So if you guys like this kind of videos, let me know. I'll make more of these because these are not really that hard to make. And obviously, I love talking about color gradings and all the small details, small tweaks, and the different tricks and tips that I use. So today, as you can see, we're gonna use one of the uh, shots which I took in the of a sheep herd. Herd, do they sheep? I don't know. I don't know what they say. So sheep farm gaye the hum, and there we got this shot around just before sunset. So there was this really uh, good sunlight. Now, as you can see, this video is shot in S-Log3. If you do not know what S-Log3 and log profile, picture profiles, all these things are. So whatever terms and everything you, that you do not understand in this video, leave them in the comments below. I'll make a whole video about them. Okay. We're going to start with a very simple note tree. Uh, I am... So I am one of those people who follow a particular note tree. Follow nahi karta hai. What we are trying to do is to get a filmic, thoda nostalgic, greenish type of look. Because in film, mein generally a greenish tint aata tha. So for people who do not understand log, if you don't have a log shoot karne wala camera, nahi hai, jo mere paas bhi nahi tha time tak, you can follow along after this particular step. Okay? The first step that I do is use a color space transform. Sorry about that use a color space transform what is what does this do this makes the log footage to a normal footage if you want to say in technical terms it turns uh, the s log 3 into a rec 709 color space okay so the input color space is uh, this this is the one i shot in sony s log s gamma 3 dot cine and input gamma is sony s log 3 it, do not worry about how it looks right now uh, and the output color space we want it to be rec 709 which is the Standard for all the media. You TV, pe jo dekhto, YouTube, pe jo dekhto, or Instagram, whatever. It is Rec. 709. Okay. Um, and I'm going to get the output Gamma 2. Gamma 2.4. Okay. Now this looks like a normal footage taken from a normal camera. But because this is a log footage, I have much more flexibility, much more range that I can push things. Okay. I think that is enough uh, babbling about all of these things. I like to label all of my notes so that i understand what i am doing in a particular note so this is the cst and i'm also going to use a lut which is pre-built into uh da vinci i'm gonna use this go into film looks and use rec 709 fujifilm uh d55 now uh you might be confused between d55 60 and 65 d55 is basically a film stock that was used in like broad daylight to get uh, to get warmer colors sorry not cooler warmer colors so it's to mimic that particular film stock that was used in film cameras so 60 is a neutral and 65 is a cooler version so this is a uh, just before sunset wala scene so i will generally use a warmer version so this is a warmer tone okay do not worry about how it looks i like to do all my adjustments before the color space transform and the lut because after the color space transform it is a rec 709 footage and you cannot tweak it much okay so i like to work with the log footage the s log 3 and at the end after all of the adjustments are done i like to put on the color space transform to make it into a rec 709 footage got it all right so the first node that i use is the exposure node in the exposure node i basically try to make the uh fix the exposure basically yeah so I, you can go ahead and use the log wheels. What are the log wheels do and what the color wheels do? I'll go on to them in the separate video. That's a little bit complicated. So here, lift, gamma and gain are basically shadows, midtones and highlights. If you do not know what those are, um, leave them in the comments below. I can make a whole video about it. But this uh, lift is basically the shadows which affects the darker regions of the photo. As you can see, in this particular case, after applying the LUT, the darker regions are a little too dark so i would like to lift the lifts a little bit just a little bit 
like 0.2 looks fine i'll also get a little bit of gamma which is the mid tone which is the mid tone needs a little bit bump and i'll get the gain to a little down and offset is overall exposure i can i will increase it a little bit okay that looks good that looks better than before i can show you this was before and this is after it looks a little bit better um okay um next we have the balance node what does balance do in balance i basically fix the white balance i will uh, take this qualifier or the eyedropper whatever you want to call it and try to click on something that is white that was white in real life so that way if you click on it it will tune the whole image basically tune the temperature and the tint of the image to uh, get it as close to the real footage the real life footage so if i click it here see it becomes a little uh, cold right because these sheep had a little bit of uh, yellowish tint on them because they were not very clean that is why it went uh, to a little too cold i will bring it back to minus 28 this looks good to my eye now uh, again when you have done enough color grading you can use your eye to do a lot of things next i use the grade i call it the grade grade is basically where i uh, tune different things about different colors okay i don't do much over here in grade i will probably put in a little bit of green in the highlight so it gets that subtle filmic look and probably a little i'll take out a little bit of green from the shadows and uh, obviously to get very uh, i don't know like stylistic looks your own creative choice you can put in a little bit of uh, see that already looks like something very nostalgic you can put in a little bit of greenish yellow overall you can do that or you can put in put it only in the gains okay see that looks good but i'm not going to do that much we're going to add a little bit of green and a little bit of red so it looks a uh, slightly golden golden and greenish okay i'm also going to go into the curves again if you do not understand any of these things uh, i i honestly cannot explain every, go into everything uh again as i'm saying if you do not understand anything comment it down below i will get to that okay so one thing about graded about log footage is that everything is compressed a lot of information is compressed in a smaller dynamic range so what we want to do as you can see most of the photo is lying in this region there is nothing in the complete shadows and nothing in the complete highlights so we're going to add a little bit of depth to the photo by pulling down the highlights a little bit keeping the mid tones as they are and pulling up the highlights so pulling down the shadows a little bit and i'll also pull up the absolute shadows so it's not as harsh and i'll also pull down the absolute whites which does not really exist over here so i'll probably pull pull this down only uh because in film it is a, it film footage has a easier like smoother roll off okay and uh yeah that looks good if you want to get in a little bit more maybe i want the grass to be a little bit yellowish i can do that maybe a little bit like uh, orangeish or a little bit greenish i can do that from the hue versus hue curve and i think that looks about well perfect and uh, for this particular shot i would like to get a little bit of like you know the moody greenish look because there is a lot of green and uh, golden orange in the photo so to get a moody greenish look i need to make the uh, green parts a little bit desaturated and also this so this was the uh, luma versus saturation curve i selected the green part and pulled the saturation down and this is the uh, hue versus luma curve luma basically means uh, brightness so if i pull down the greens the greenish parts and the yellowish part we see you can see if you pull it down the yellowish and greenish parts are becoming darker and brighter so i'll like to keep them a little dark something like that and that looks good for the gray all right all right perfect and 
I'll add a few more things in the exposure. I feel like we can add a little bit of mid tones as I'm losing a little bit of detail in mid tones. All right, that looks good. Okay, I'll make another node and I will call it softness. So what softness does is basically film like videos that are shot on films or photos that are shot on films are not like very sharp as digital footage so we will add on some artificial softness you can basically come on to here this is called blur and if you increase the radius it will become more blurred if you decrease the radius it will become more sharp so i will increase the radius barely it's like 0 0.25 that looks good to my eyes okay you might not be able to see it in the youtube video because youtube compression fucks everything up but yeah Okay, so you know what, in the grade, I still don't like how the shadows are a little bit crushed. I think I will lift this and this as well. This gives a little more like a softer image overall. Um, yeah, yeah, that looks about right. That looks about right to me. Uh, I think maybe pull down the mid tones a little bit. Perfect. So. To emphasize and also in like older cameras, you will get a natural vignette around the uh, image. So I'll add that with a power window with a circle. And uh, what I'll do, I'll basically just decrease the brightness. As you can see, there is a circle that I made and the circle has a softness, which is uh, quite high. So that is something that's going to impact us. So whatever changes I'm doing, it is getting applied outside the window. Okay, so if I pull it down, as you can see, this is a vignette that is getting created. Now, obviously, we do not need that much vignette. We're gonna keep it around like something like something like that. Very subtle, very subtle. Like you can see if I turn it on and off, but naturally you cannot, you won't be able to see it much. All right. So okay, perfect. We got the vignette. So I'm gonna name it as VIG. Okay. Mm. Sorry about that. Okay. V uh, VIG, that is done. I will add a parallel node to the vignette. I make all of this exposure power window changes in parallel nodes. Uh, what are parallel nodes? How are they different from the normal serial nodes? I will explain in some other video. So I am adding this gradient over here. And again, this is you can see how this gradient works. I just add a very subtle gradient. And I'll probably just stretch it out even more okay, to make it really, really soft. That looks good. And uh, after the combine node, I will create a glow node. This will give the like very nostalgic feel to this whole shot. There is this effect called glow that we can add. And I will pull the threshold down. As you can see, the brighter parts are getting uh like blown out and a lot softer so what i like to do i pull it down a lot and instead of composite type add i like to do it soft light now i can pull it down even more to my liking wherever i want like something like this looks really fine to me and i can also like adjust how much of the gain is uh, uh affected by this i'll just keep it right there how much of the gamma is affected i'll probably increase the decrease the saturation no i'll just keep it there i'll increase the gamma a little bit something like that that looks good to me and i'll probably increase decrease this as well because i'm losing a lot of information in the background all right that looks good i can uh, increase I, i'll probably keep the opacity where it is it looks good honestly <laughs> perfect okay now i've got the glow and everything it already looks quite good as you can see this is the before and this is the after all right i'll show you without the cst so you can understand uh, if it was a normal footage how would it look mm, i'll get everything off so this is the rec 709 footage and this is the final grade you can see the difference okay um so on top of this 
uh, one very important and very significant part of a filmic look is film grain. We can obviously add film grain if you're using the pro version, the studio version, the paid version of uh, Da Vinci. I don't currently. So instead what I do is I go and add a film grain uh, overlay. That is literally a film grain file. I'll show you if I can. Uh, so yeah, the film grain basically looks like this. This is a literal grain. You add there's an overlay over your footage. Like this is our footage and we add that overlay. Uh, I'll just zoom it in a little bit so it covers the whole footage. Now I'll come down to composite mode. Set it to something that you like. Whatever you feel like is good. I personally like overlay because uh, the grain, you, see, you can see, you can see the grain around the picture. Right, I'll, I'll turn it on and off. See, this is grain off. Now, it, some parts look a little bit like smudged out. And for those particular parts, if it around the grain, it looks even more like filmic. Right? Okay, so the, you can again adjust the opacity. If you do not like that much grain, you can uh, obviously like zoom in somewhere and see how much of grain you want. I personally keep it around 65 for this particular, 60-65 for this particular image. And voila, you sort of have what we wanted. There you can see, this is the before and the after of the film look, the nostalgic greenish golden type of film look that we can achieve with this and if you want this particular LUT this particular uh, lookup table if you know what a LUT is uh, if you want this particular LUT I will link it in the description below and uh, yeah I want you to fuck around and so so yeah I generally so yeah, obviously this whole process was sort of catered to this particular footage, but obviously this LUT can be used on other footages as well. I'll show you. I'll show you like probably uh, this particular footage. Let's take this. There's this footage, which is already graded, but um, I will show you by using the same LUT. I will get rid of this. All of this and by applying the same LUT you see you can get the similar filmic look obviously you have to come down and balance the exposure and uh, different things for the that particular image I'll probably have to uh, add a little more glow to this yeah so I'll probably need to add a little more um, yellow to the whole image yeah that looks fine that looks very cool so you can use this LUT for other images as well and obviously you have to understand how the whole grade works so you can come down and change a little bit of exposure a little bit of balance little bit of particular color that you need to change all the things can work and i want you to experiment with color grading because the more you experiment i have learned color grading through experimentation and free videos on youtube only and uh, if you guys want to learn more about color grading cinematography about making good telling good stories you should definitely subscribe to the channel and I want to be that channel that I never had while I was learning all of these things. I was wandering around YouTube. I want to be the one-stop challenge channel. Sorry. <laughs> I want to be the one-stop channel. Just one channel ko follow karke you can learn all of these things very clearly. Okay. That was it. That was the first tutorial, first color grading tutorial that I have ever made on YouTube. And uh, if you like these kind of videos, I can make way more color grading tutorials happily. Let me know in the comments below and I will make more.